All right, everybody. Welcome to Guardian Training. Today's theme is power. Okay, so we are going to be activating basically what we mean when I mean power. And I'm going to do it physically, emotionally, spiritually. So for those of you who want to know what Guardian Training is about, perhaps you're getting to watch this and getting a sneak preview on what we're going to do next month on the 18th, because we're going to be trying to meet on the 18th every time. So we know internally that the 18th means guardian training, and we don't have to worry about always mixing up dates and going around. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to ask you if you can get up and out of whatever you're sitting. Give yourself, make sure you at least have like <laughs> your arms width of space around you. And we're going to start with really gentle going to wake up your your body the first thing we're going to do for today and for this month guardians is i'm going to teach you some very basics about egyptian power poses it's you don't have to call it egyptian if you don't want to but basically this is something you can do where you barely have to move and you can charge up your entire body now what i'd recommend before you do this which you can do now as a comparison so how about We'll do one without any pre, pre warmups. You can see the difference. Okay, so what you're gonna do is get your left foot, your right foot about, you know, shoulder width apart. Okay, put your left foot forward just slightly. So about like half a foot forward. You see, you're not like obviously feeling weird, but your one foot is clearly in front of the other. Now I want you to make a fist with both of your fists. And I want you to kind of leave your arms at your side and these fists and this pose actually where your one foot is in front of the other slightly and their hands are in fists. You see that a lot actually with the Egyptian sculptures. This may be way old news to you and you may know exactly what I'm talking about, but that's what we're going to start today. So I'm going to have you clench your fists and I'm going to just have you stand in this position for just a few minutes here and we're going to just intentionally charge our bodies and feel the power starting to kind of flood into ourselves so we're just going to we're going to notice the obscure movement so just take a second listen to my voice close your eyes you're doing this position i want you to concentrate on where in your body you're starting to feel movement i want you to take some big breaths let that energy start to charge up just have your breathing be the thing that gets more intense. You may start feeling it in your arms and your hips. I want you to lift your chin a little bit. Ideally, you'd be doing this pose directly towards the sun. You'd be posing right at the sun. Obviously, my sun is like setting like over here, so I could technically go this direction and power pose this way but i'm gonna wait and just do it next to you but yeah basically having your one foot forward you're using your fists we're powering up okay now with your fists i'm gonna ask you to kind of raise your arms into like a showing off your biceps position so we're gonna raise our arms up like this okay i'm gonna open your hands just want you to kind of point your hands over to your crown as if you have like an invisible hat on, you're touching your invisible hat. Energy is going to be coming out of your hands and kind of raining down over your body just now. Now we want you to sweep it down and push it out the foot that's forward. Push it out and through into the ground. So we're going to ground our left foot. Nice. So let's do the power pose now. And the other side, we're going to put our right foot forward. Again, your fists. Hands and fists at your side, chin up, close your eyes, breathe. Feel the difference. Balance both hemispheres. Good. Now I'm gonna have you bring your fists up to your heart. Cross them over your heart. Push that energy into your chest. Now 
and release. Shake your hands, shake out your hands. Okay, so first I just want you to notice if you felt any sort of surge just simply from doing this particular pose. Sometimes it's harder to notice when you're new to it. Sometimes it's extremely easy to notice. Some of us have muscle memory from doing this from our other lives as guardians. This is a very normal thing. Usually what you progress with after this is you start bringing your arms over to your heart and over by your head and above your head and aiming towards the sun. And these are sort of areas where you can continue to absorb through your hands. You can absorb through your face. And you just keep kind of filling your, your pot. You keep filling your cup with sunlight and with this power through this pose. So use this whenever you're starting to feel a little weak. You just have to stand there like this and face the sun and it will begin charging your system. Those of you who know Reiki know what I'm talking about probably. So that's excellent. So what we're going to do now that you've kind of gotten a little bit of a charge is I'm going to now encourage you to do a little bit of um, jumping up and down so we can get our energy kind of, I want to say shaken up and then also pressed through your heels into the floor. So easy enough to do. We're just going to bounce on top on our toes. So you're going to go up on your toes and go down where your, your uh, heels kind of slam into the ground a little bit. So this is going to help us ground our circuit that we just kind of charged. So one more time up on your toes and kind of slam down on your heels. Now notice which heel you're hitting harder. Let's try and equalize it. Okay. So make sure your feet are together shoulder width apart, up on your toes, and go down, kind of slam that energy down. Okay, that one was a good one for me. So now I'm going to have you do it a couple more times if you need. So again, one more. Grounded, up again. Grounded. Okay, so we've smacked our heels into the ground a couple times. Now lift up your right foot. Kind of give it a nice little caveman stomp and widen your stance a bit. Do the other foot stomp. Make sure you're actually accessing the ground. I'm going to have you do full star. You're going to go full star mode. So I want your arms to go all the way out. This looks this is a weird angle. My arms don't look like the same length where you guys are looking, but <laughs> arms all the way out, just at a 45 degree angle, you know, sort of direction. We're going diagonally. Your, your, your legs are wider too. We're kind of starring our energy out. Okay, this is one where we can tap into our sensitivities a bit more. So just close your eyes, feel your fingertips. Does it feel like you're almost touching like filaments of energy a little bit? Almost like there's some tension almost against your hands. This is a good sign. Means that we're charging up your aura, things are happening. So with that resistance, I want you to now press your fingers all the way forward so they're nice and straight, like you're shooting energy out from both sides. This is sending all the way to the corners of your reality, your power. Okay, now we're going to kind of reach, 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 reach to the edge of our very aura. Let's intentionally reach all the way to the edge of our aura. We're going to grab the edge with our hand, grab it, and we're going to pull it back in. Pulling our aura back in because we're going to start over. We're going to reset you. So pulling your aura back in. Press, press, press into your chest. Good. <laughs> now, I don't know if any of you guys have done any cardio today. But since now we've kind of pulled in the aura, we're resetting it. I'm going to ask you now to do some jumping jacks. If you're so capable, please and thank you. I want you to do 10. And then if you haven't, you know, your breathing didn't change at all because maybe you're in better shape. I need you to do 20 or 30 because I need your breathing to start to change. When we do these jumping jacks, I want your voice to get a little bit hoarse even where you're like, you realize you're having to breathe a little harder. Like when you're running, we're going to have to do that. You have to change your lung capacity next to kind of get the next activation going. <laughs> Good job, everybody. I hope that you actually did your jumping jacks. 
just then. I got 30 in. Now that we're breathing deep, we're gonna lay into that. So I want you to breathe even deeper and louder. I don't care if you're breathing with your mouth, just get as much air in there as possible. I recently broke my nose, so I don't care. Just get the air in. Breath through your nose is best, but we're gonna keep bringing air into our chest cavity, okay? We gotta bring life force in because this is where the power lives. So let's bring that air into our lungs, force it in there, okay? So keep breathing. Feel that blood flow. Okay, excellent. So now that our blood is moving, that's gonna start moving more to our third eye also, which is kind of what we want. I also needed to kind of activate your third chakras a little bit too, which helps with that breathing. So <clears throat> I'm going to ask you actually, if you have the capacity, we're going to do another round of jumping jacks because I have a feeling we haven't quite broken through that layer. So actually, if you could do 50 jumping jacks now while we're off camera, do them and then come back. And then we're going to go on to the next stage because I feel like we didn't open up enough on that one. So I got to open us more. I'm going to force you to do it. So let's do our jumping jacks. Okay, I want you to try and do 50 jumping jacks. Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I immediately started getting a cramp actually. So I think one of you guys probably got a cramp also. That was, it was just like, oh, so that's good because that is where I need more oxygen. So let's breathe some love into that area. <laughs> Wherever you're getting cramps or resistance, put your healing hands over the area. Let's breathe into the area with intention together, guys. Same spot, okay. Let's do that. Um, let's see what uh, messages also we get from this area, okay? So let's breathe over these areas. Let's tap into them, okay? I literally just learned that you can basically cure cancer by increasing the amount of oxygen in your system. So if you're ever feeling like, Ooh, something weird's going on, just breathe more, just breathe more and get to a lower elevation <laughs> and you'll get more blood in your, our oxygen in your blood right away. So if you ever feel like you're like sick or there's some sort of psychosis forming, uh, even thoughts, maybe you have cancer or something like that, just breathe. Okay. Just add oxygen. And if it's not enough, there's oxygen places. You can go to oxygen bars and so on. Even just adding that into your diet, oxygen, literally into your diet, especially those of us who live up in high elevations. Okay. Oxygen into the diet, oxygen into the diet. I'm getting a lot of vision of blood, blood flow. when I'm tapping into this area. Let me know in the comments where what you're feeling from the areas of resistance after you just worked your body a little bit. I'm getting the message about my blood on this one. Yeah, blood oxygen, which is good. That's funny. Let it out. Okay, so I want you now to let your jaw go. We're going to do that exercise with the tongue where you let your tongue kind of release. And we're going to let that energy, that power kind of flow out your face, okay? Now that we've kind of reset from those uh, jumping jacks. Actually, first, I want you to clench your shoulders all the way up to your ears and kind of flex, 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 and then let go. Do one more time. Clench up to your ears. Clench, clench, clench. Not obviously to the crazy amount, but clench it so your muscles know. 
and now relax everything. Let it just, and now sway your arms around a little bit. This is just all about getting your power reset. We haven't even gotten into it yet. I'm just doing your warm up, guided warm up. Swing around. Then we're going to open our mouths. Okay, open your mouth all the way so your jaw is totally slack, like mine. Now close it, normal. Now open your mouth again. Let it relax, let it relax. Just let your jaw go. Don't even hold your jaw, just hold, let it relax. Okay, you're gonna let that energy flow out of us. Um, if you start drooling, it's okay. I'm the only one on camera. Let it out, let it out, let it out. Release, release. Don't hold that jaw, just ignore it. Let it hold, let it hang there. Ah. Does that feel better? Some size of relief even for my own body. It's like, yeah, that's nice. Okay, now with your tongue, I want you to stick your tongue all the way out. Healthy tongues, okay? We need to make sure if you're like, ooh, my tongue doesn't feel so good or healthy right now, I got you because tongue is major. So stick your tongue all the way out comfortably or just relax it out of your mouth. Like so, now close your eyes and just let it happen. Release your jaw, okay? Hold it there. Feel your body relaxing even more. I feel a lot of release in my center area right here when I do that actually, right in my, my solar plexus and my gut, my tension. One thing about power is that you need to learn how to wield it, but also need to learn how to allow it flow through you effortlessly. So we got to stay loose and relaxed. Nice. You guys are relaxing now, I can tell. Okay, good tongue workout, good tongue workout. Now I want you to really stick your tongue out like all the way out, like you're forcing the energy out of your mouth. Like, like you're about to scare somebody, you know those like when they do the hockey dances and they like bug out and they're like, ah, and they're in your face. You're like, oh, I wanna do that. I'm giving you permission now to just haka face, whatever. Just let it out, make the noise if you have to, just like, ah let it out I don't whatever privacy levels you get just let it out okay this is your time now where we're gonna let that fire out do it with your hands if you have to okay nice nice shake it off shake it off all right you got chest yeah my chest was my chest was tight too, so we're gonna get there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so let's open up our chest, wider legs. One hand over your head, just, we're gonna lean. Kind of just keep the arm by your ear and lean over at your hips. Mm -hmm. Lean over. To the other side. Stretch that vertebrae. I want you to stretch all the way down, touch the ground if you can. Crunch, 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 those are vertebra. Yummy, yummy. Get all those bubbles of gas out. Do a little bit of a wave with your arms, okay? This is in order to kind of get your back flexibility. So lifting with your shoulder, twisting with your spine a little bit. Okay, now shimmy your shoulders a little bit. <laughs> you can lean forward that's what's helping my back it's like if I lean forward a little bit I've got some tension in the middle right here oh that feels better okay 
Okay, so obviously power in general, <clears throat> our most powerful force is this constant, amazing process of your blood basically going through our body so fast. So that's a lot of the power that we wield every day. Blood pressure is important on that because obviously things can cause you to have higher, more tension or higher blood pressure, stress, being a guardian, you know, looking over people who can't look over themselves, for example, that can make you a little bit stressed. So we need to make sure that our blood flow is not being <laughs> restricted for us because we are the emergency, emergency support team, right? So whenever you start feeling your heart starting to get tight, tight, your breathing's to start getting tight, your muscles starting to get tight, that's how you know that you've overdone it, obviously, and that it is essential that you immediately begin replenishing yourself because like I said, as a guardian, you sort of have a special position. And so when you start getting depleted, there's other opportunities to try and deplete you further that kind of show up because you being depleted is a goal of some, some sides of the, of the game. So that power posing is an excellent way to really quickly get your power levels back up because you'll notice when your power levels are low or when you're more vulnerable was when the matrix and people who you clearly see who you know are not, I would say meeting your standard are gonna start challenging you. And it's basically because they are literally trying to, to uh, challenge the alpha in their life and they see you weak, so they're trying to challenge you for their own, you know, their own pursuit of potential power. So again, power poses are really amazing. I've literally done this in the middle of an argument multiple times where I've had to stand in power pose all of a sudden because you know you're talking to someone, right? Or you have a client or whatever, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, they're pushing me too far and I'm starting to curl in on myself, right? And you're like, ugh. If, especially if they're getting angry. But the trick is to just start doing the power pose, but I'm gonna teach you one more uh, addition to that. And so, you know, get your legs shoulder width apart. Let's get your left, you can don't even need to put your left foot forward for this, but that is the power pose. So if you're talking to someone, just arrange yourself in your body like this immediately. And you can uh, also put your hands on your hips. Sorry, I was like, what is that again? Also, you can put your hands on your hips. So you can start charging it in fists and then you put hands on your hips afterward or hands over the heart in specific. And that energy will start flowing into those areas basically based off of the electrical uh, conduction of our limbs in a way. So pull it into your heart. And just as again, if someone is messing with you, the more energy you start to pull into your body in that moment, the quicker their little tirade is going to end. So another way to begin pulling that energy into your body when you need it is to start doing a figure eight motion with your body in a swaying motion. So you can do this extremely subtle. Like you can get to a point where it doesn't even look like you're moving, but you're transferring your weight really fast between your feet. And you're actually uh, in a way as a infinity sign, passing and swaying your body between the two feet. You guys know what I'm saying? So with your hip movement, if you're looking down, you'd be tracing a figure eight between your legs. So now, like I said, do it more with your hips. Like let's, let's get our hips stretched a little more. Do some figure eights, make them large if you want. No big deal. My hips start to pop around immediately, but <laughs> you know, lean into it, lean into it. So now you know how the basic feeling is. So now that let's try doing it without anyone seeing. Okay. So just move the energy. You can start swaying a little bit just between, especially if someone's talking to you, they won't notice. Even if you are swaying when they're starting to lose it a little bit, that might trigger their brain. Like, oh, this person's, I'm starting to lose them. If they have any true social skill, which usually when this is the case, that's something these people lack. But <laughs> to get your power up, just going to start making that figure eight motion. Start pulling the energy up through the ground, through your left foot. This is what the Reiki practitioners do. They pull it up through their left foot. 
they pass it over and across their body to their right hand. They cross it back over to their left hand and they push it down through their right foot. So it's another figure eight motion. So it's up, up across your heart, up from the left, across your heart, from your, to your right hand, to your left hand. Some people, that's how they move the chi ball between their hands. They pull it up from the earth, get it into their right hand, pass it to the left, push it down through the right foot. That's how you circuit. So if you wanna pull energy and start healing people and connect to the earth, this will give you that circuit. But like I said, if you're just trying to up your power levels just a little bit because there's a challenge that you're coming up against and this is the way that I've worked the best. And as well as like you start breathing and literally pulling it up, pulling it up, depositing it in your heart. You'll be quite stunned quickly how like easy it is to actually start feeling better right away. You're pulling energy up from the earth. I'm doing my very like very quiet, very slight switching of energy and conducting of energy between my two feet and my two arms, using it to charge my heart. And this will get your power levels up. I don't know if you can feel it, but I can already feel like my need to take a deeper breath. So I'm all of a sudden things are moving more. Just keep doing that swaying. I'm feeling heat starting to build up in my head already by just doing this. I feel it in my chest. So we're going to keep sending energy there for a little longer. <laughs> Circulate that chi. I, I think we're almost all charged up now. And we're going to just quickly do a quick power update to each of your chakras and your aura. And then we're going to do some, some exercise work where we're going to, we're going to write some things out. So <clears throat> let's begin with the earth star chakra or our planet in general. You guys, your feet are planted on the ground. I want you to do it again. Go on your tippy toes and slam your heels on the ground one more time, just to remind ourselves we're attached to the earth. Ah, nice. Slammed right in there. So I'm grounded into the earth. The earth star chakra is beneath your feet. It's literally just the soul of the planet. And in my opinion, the earth star. And some say that the monks can somehow push against the earth star and that's how they levitate. So if you're a levitator, that is some advice about that. So knowing and really feeling that tension and that magnetic pull to the ground, there's ways where you can use that then to repel yourself and push yourself off the ground with opposite charges and builds up of charge, which the monks practice. I don't exactly practice this, but as a, a, a acrobat, I have experienced this and I know how to build up the body to get more explosive, you know, air and you bounce off of the earth in a way <laughs> and land on the earth also with lots of force and be all right. And so we're going to remind our earth star chakra that we love it. We appreciate it. And that we wish to have a healthy relationship with its power. And thank you for showing us how to continue having a healthy relationship with this chakra, with this power and this particular part of our aura. Awesome. So put your hands on the ground, just touch the ground as a thank you. Awesome. So we're moving our energy up. I want you to reach down to your feet and drag the energy up your, your shins, okay? So sweep it up. So all the way from your feet, all the way up, we're gonna sweep it up from the earth star. Pull, 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 pull. And you're gonna go touch your tailbone, touch the back of your tailbone the bottom of your tailbone. Next, this is your root chakra, the tailbone. And in my opinion, the, this is the sensitive spot. This is the nervous system area that is the root chakra. And so this particular area, some of us have injury in this area. Some of us have trauma in this area. It gets beat up sometimes. And so we're just gonna, I want you to place your fingers right on that bone, okay? All of your fingertips so you can. And again, we're just going to say thank you to our root chakra. Thank you so much for all that you have served and shown me. Thank you for your power. 
And thank you for showing me now what it is that I can do to respect this power more and be in alignment. And just listen. Listen. Okay, so what I'm getting in my third eye is a lot of actually green energy, which is funny. I'm seeing red now, but I had like a splotch of green in there. Okay, so we're going to add some love, some green ray love into this red ray area. For me, at least, you guys can join or not. Whatever it is that you feel like you need to inject it to this chakra, whatever power, love, light, sound, tone. Maybe do an om. Okay, that feels good. Nice and reset. So I want to drag your fingers up your spine to the, your lower back. Reach your fingers around front to hold your hips, basically. And we're going to activate and move into this sacral chakra area or your like whole pelvic area, basically. There's a lot going on in the pelvis. Okay, this is not just your genitals. This is your all of these interconnected muscles and ligaments and stuff. It's a lot going on in here. We need this area to be very happy and also heard uh, right away if there's any issues because walking very help. We really much, really much like to walk. So let's keep our hands on our hips again. Deep breath. Charge in there with your fingertips. Send your love and your extra power in there. Like little seeking sparks. We're going to say thank you. Thank you to the sacral chakra area. Thank you for everything that you've done for me this life. I appreciate you. I love you. And I'm here to listen to whatever it is you need to fortify your power and keep you healthy. That was a good one, guys. Good release. I felt that one go right up into my chest. That's great. Another deep breath. Breathe out. Excellent. So we're going to work with this area a little bit with the written section we're going to do soon, as soon as we get through the rest of the chakras, because the, the bottom two chakras are definitely ones that we can have some more real life issues with that are that are helpful to re rework with the upper chakras a little bit to kind of re recode how the lower chakras feel about everything that's going on. So we're going to work on that. So let's bring it up to the solar plexus. Okay. This is my solar plexus area. Um, ironically, I'm going to put my fingers all around it and kind of let it shine forth instead. So this is like the middle of my chest where my rib cage meets is like right here. Breathe. Thank you to our soul, our sun, our solar plexus. The golden light that shines out from within us all. Thank you so much for shining, for growing, for teaching. Thank you for being so healthy, so adjusted, so loving. I replenish you with your power. And I'm here to listen to any scenarios which you need to adjust for power's sake. Where are you giving your power away to get the judgment or the approval of others? That's a big one here. You don't need to project anyone on anyone else. You can literally take credit for everything you see in the universe. You don't have to copy them or do it better or whatever. The fact that some other entity out there is doing a thing and you like it, you can take credit for that because if they are life, you're life and it's good. So don't take all the pressure off, you know, it's okay to watch. We have mirror neurons for a reason. You don't have to do everything yourself. You can take credit and enjoy the art that is the human motion and the life 
that all these individuals are actually just sharing. All right, good. Let that one go. We're going to build that confidence back. I am ultimately confident in myself. My will and the divine will are aligned. I responsibly use my power. Excellent. Up to the heart chakra. I love you, heart chakra. Thank you so much for all that you have served me. I'm here to hear you. I wish to be receptive to your needs always. Thank you for showing me your power. Thank you for allowing me to embody my love and my power as an individual. Thank, for, thank you for the power that you've given me to live and thrive. I love you. Nice. Okay. Over the throat. Grasp your throat like you're choking yourself. So it'll cover the whole upper heart, uh, <laughs> thymus area and your throat. So I want you to cover with both of your arms. Gently. Okay. Gently. Cover your skin with your hands out of love, out of a hug, a throat hug. Thank you, throat chakra, for all that you've done for me. Thank you for the demonstration of power that you've shown me. Thank you for letting me know where I need to heal and correct so our power may be pure and effective when necessary. I love you and I wish to treat you better and better. I wish to say better and better things. I wish to hear better and better things. This or better. Excellent. I really hope you're listening to every one of your chakras. If there's anything coming up, don't forget it. Okay, so put your fingers now, put both your thumbs over your third eye, like so. <laughs> okay, thumbs are super important. They're the activator of the mudras. Your thumb is the activator. So we're activating both valleys <laughs> of our brain here, both hemispheres, connecting it all the way down. May it drip down. May all information drip down perfectly into my third eye so I may have my multidimensional awareness and power aligned. Thank you, third eye, for showing me what I need, for helping me understand the use of my power, for helping me understand all the stimuli around me at all times in order to be a good guardian and protector of the innocent, of the developing. I love my cosmic awareness. Nice. Okay, finally, we're going to put our crowns on, okay? Crown on, okay. Hold your crown, finally. Thank you, Crown Chakra, for serving me. I love you. Thank you for opening me up to the cosmic intelligence. Thank you for making it not just about me, but a connection and a flow with all things. Thank you to my Crown Chakra for showing me where my power is going and where it is coming from. Thank you to my crown chakra for connecting deeply with my earth star chakra and keeping me grounded and my circuit healthy as I walk the earth. Bring your arms all the way around. We're gonna sweep your aura really quick. Bring it down, bring it to the ground, sweep your hands. All over again, we're going to sweep from the top, sweep, 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 all the way to the sides. Release down to the root. Okay, now I want you to reach up all the way to the intelligent infinity with your fingertips. Okay, all the way up, all the way up through the remaining chakras above our head, all the way up through the different levels of our aura. And we send pure love and support from this core of the seven chakras, all the way up, reaching all the way to the cosmic affinity, all the way left and right, 
in every direction and all the way down beneath me, all the way around 360 degrees. My Merkaba is fully activated, is fully healthy, and it is only attracting what serves me and repels what does not. Excellent. So we've got that power sorted out for your chakras. We did it. Okay. So we have a few minutes left. So I'm going to just do a little bit of written work with you guys. So if you have your piece of paper, now's the time when we're going to start scribbling some stuff down to clear and see what's up. So first off, before we get started, fresh page, I want you to write what chakras give you the most resistance or talked to you in this session. Okay. So give you a few seconds. There's only a few we covered. There's only seven. If all of them just write all seven, it's all good. Just be honest with yourself. Okay, so in this group, we had the most, at least in the comments, the most resistance in the sacral and the heart area for sure so far, which is totally good. Makes total sense that we have at least something to go off. Like it's great that we weren't perfect, right? Because that's why we're training. Because there's like, we're just working out the like, we're working out the tight spots. We're working out the issues, right? So first things first with the sacral. The sacral is all about basically your creative right to exist. So obviously, you know, we've living in a society where if you aren't creating something that is super popular, or if you're not creating something at all physically for anyone else, you're pretty much considered useless. So that's hard. And that can be tough, especially if you have any sort of handicap, which a lot of people I have now been around do, which is help mirror my own dis. Uh, my own toxicity about the purpose of people, the purpose of our power, the purpose of our momentum. And it's not always to be used to serve and do and create outward of ourselves. There's a whole other class of people that are far more inward than outward, introvert versus extrovert. So creating internally is something that is totally, like I said, in the Western world, at least just written off as useless. But imagine what the greatest thinkers of our time really do. A lot of people go into solidarity and they go into, they don't have any partners. They don't have any distractions. They aren't releasing their sexual energy with a partner or try and make family. No, they're in uh, a cave somewhere. They're locked away and they're using this creativity to, and they're experiencing and accessing an amazing world of imagination and creation when they do uh, work and fortify those energies and work in that creative field. And these, these imaginary situations and this state of being has helped humanity forward immensely. These thinkers and these people who were disciplined and cultivated their sexual energy instead to create and even just imagine better and event better for us has been huge. They may not have even finished or made any of the inventions they wrote down, but at least, you know, they did, they were able to pass along something after all. So I just want you to know that your sacral area and your creative energy is unique. You came to the earth with this, with this power. There's nothing anyone can say because they literally don't understand where you're com coming from. They're a whole different perspective. They'll just mirror you the best they can. You don't have to listen to them and you don't have to give your power away to their opinion. Your creation is yours. It's just like as if you were literally having a baby and then someone came up to you and was like, oh, I, why'd you make them like this? No, absolutely not. You don't question how the DNA is going to be expressed and what sort of creative being is going to come out of you when you're having a child. And the same goes with your creative projects too. So I just wanted to let you know that that is you have permission to create <laughs> and whatever it is that you maybe haven't created yet, I want you to write it down right now as your sacral chakra is talking to you. Whatever comes to mind first, just let that energy out. Let it start working on letting that flow out of you. So I wrote book on mine. This is a simple example. 
your sacral and your root. Okay, yes. So obviously we've been having issues where there's literal mind control to try and make you think you don't even belong on the planet you were born on. So we can just cancel, clear, delete that, send that back. No, thank you. We don't want that anymore. It doesn't serve me. Obviously that's a lie. What instead my root is serving me as a connection to Gaia herself. And what is it and where is it that she wants me? And where is it that I can nourish her back? Where is it that we can nourish each other in a, in a copacetic way? It's you and your root chakra is between you and the planet you're on, in my opinion. So no one can tell you you don't belong on the planet you were born on. <laughs> and so just know that the earth is rich and to relearn and understand the resources of the earth the true resources of the earth that are free and free of charge you know the animals aren't paying to eat the fruits off the trees or the bugs you know what i'm saying so just tap more into that energy and see the wealth around you and embrace it and embody it and claim it claim the wealth that is your planet because it's literally a reflection of you so you can claim the wealth of this planet as a piece of who you are. You have every right to, and there's nothing they can do to take that away from you. It's already happened. You were already born here. She already chose you. Here you are walking amongst us. You are now a walking, talking tree. So let's let's move on to the heart chakra. So we're loving, you're a loving tree, right? You're a loving tree, but uh, someone wasn't good to you. Oh, your heart, your, your power, you're giving it away. Oh, I love you and I want to help you, but why are you hurting me? Oh, I love you, I want to connect to you. Why are you rejecting me? We're bringing all that power back. So let's think about those moments really quick where your heart was like, you're heartbroken. There's an issue. Somebody in your life made you feel unlovable, perhaps, uh, unlikable, perhaps. Maybe it was a member of your own family. Maybe it was, you know, one of your parents when you're a baby. That one's real tough, okay? So let's write that person's name down, whoever, whatever you call them, okay? Write that name down where you feel like your heart's still kind of like, oh, that name or situation, okay? We're going to write it down. We're taking our power back right now. I'm going to show you how. Write the name down. Circle the name, circle, 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 really focus your eyes on the name, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, underline, big underline, and write, I love you, and there's nothing they can do about it, is it? It's done. You are all powerful. Now, congratulations. You literally took your power back. Hold on. Didn't that feel good? Didn't that feel good? Just a second there, like. There's nothing they can do about that. There's nothing they can do about the love that you had in your heart for them. They may be able to reject it verbally or in your face physically, but the fun part about the hearts is that it's an electromagnetic field. So just like the earth and the sun, there's no escaping unless they're a robot, but even they use electricity, I think. So it's like, but no matter what, your heart's electromagnetic field transferred that data immediately. To that person they received it fully and honestly from your body just know that your love is being received no matter what the reaction you get it is being received there is a quantum lock between your heart and the people you know and love you can send that energy to them immediately purely innocently and they will get it now, how they respond, that's an ego thing, usually. Usually, uh, people like to lash out to people who are loving to them because they weren't able to lash out at somebody who their previous person, they thought they were safe around, you know, their most safe person. It didn't get, someone wasn't able to hold space for their heart and their needs. So why would they bother holding space for anyone else? And who cares about love? Because the person who told them they loved them was also abusing them and not hearing them out. So... If someone now has been telling you they love you and sending you love and energy that you are uncomfortable with, we're going to write their name down next, okay? If there's a difference there. So someone is, you know, you know, with, because they can, you know, sending you love and attention, but you're not receiving it well. You're not sure what to do with that power dynamic either. So let's write their name down. 
again if they exist. If not, just go back to the other people who you want to still send love to and write more names down real quick. Okay, now circle that name like so. So you're surrounding their name, you're focusing on their energy right now with your, basically your telepathy. And you can send them the love of the one infinite creator. <laughs> love of one infinite. <laughs> I can't even spell it. Whoops, make sure you spell it right. Creator. And that is going to give them the entire universe of love that they're looking for properly from the one infinite creator. It does not have to be directly from you, but clearly the person who is clawing at you for your power and energy is in need of some love and care. And most of us understand that, but you don't have to be the person from this individuation to provide them with that physically, because that's actually a lot. We're learning that a lot more now that we are moving into more subtle communication and energy and movement instead of overt. And I assume that's because we're moving into the age of Aquarius, which is an air sign, which is definitely not the big macho physical energy that is the intellectual um, fairy, basically, who you can't pin down. So intellectual fairies out there, they're like, one infinite creator, please send love to this dense, sad, desperate being. I love them as they are me. I don't wish to reject them. And I wish for them to get the help and replenishment that they need. And thank you for releasing me from this duty and giving it back to the whole and allowing us all to take care of each other. And I release these responsibilities for myself because a lot of you healers, I know also try and you'll take problem cases and you'll lug them along a little while. Let's just take those guys off your shoulder. Be like, I love you. And let the one infinite creator love you even better. And if you come back to me, I hope to get better instructions on how to proceed, you know, but usually they will go and they will be getting the energy they need. Don't feed them more energy either. If you don't have to really let those cords kind of have their time and wander to the next thing. Because I can see and sense that you guys have some wandering uh, not only eyes watching you, but I see and sense that you're holding up probably some people who think that they're just sticking around with you is going to be enough for their ascension, but it's not. So you're going to have to let them go, let them flounder, let them fail. Okay. Because that's out of love. That's called trust. You have to have faith. The universe is going to provide for them as well as it did you and let them either fail or get some type of miracle that's going to teach both of you anyways about the benevolent love of the universe that is possible for us. So releasing all the tension off of our heart, that self-responsibility, responsibility for our family, for our friends, we release it and we release to the innocence of pure love and allow it to come through us in the moments that it needs to. Allowing ourselves to receive and give easier and smarter is what I want to say. So very nice. Those two chakras, good job. Ooh, stabbing pains in your back while practicing that part. Okay, let's, let's, uh, yeah, you clearly do have some hooks back there. So one thing about hooks, if you don't know yet, is that you want the line to get loose before you release the hook. You don't want it to be tight. You know what I'm saying? So first you gotta love the line. Okay, so you feel there's an attachment between you and the person. Thank you, I love you, loosen up, loosen up, loosen up. I release you, loosen up. We're gonna loosen this tension, loosen this tension. And you'll notice like, if the cord is like my arm, it'll start like, getting looser and looser and the string will get longer and kind of lazy and that's how you'll know like ah, and I release this and you just let it go it's not like gonna ricochet back and smack the person you know what I'm saying it's just kind of kind of fall next to you and they won't even notice that it 
unhooked from you. They'll just keep walking. They won't even notice. So that's the key. A lot of the time when we do sort of cord cutting or whatever, that person feels it because again, the quantum and it can cause, you know, them to re up and bothering you because <laughs> they feel something's missing because they've been energetically siphoning from you or trying to take credit for you in some weird way in their little imagination station. It happens to the best of us. A lot of us project onto other people, even other online spiritual people. When they start screwing up, we're like, what are you doing? You, uh, I believed in you. And those are chords too. So you got to you gotta let those people go. You got to let them live their friggin' life, right? So <laughs> let these people live their lives. Let them fail, but do it with love. Loosen up those cords. Wait till they feel nice and loose and just like unhook them and let them fall to the ground instead of like I said, that ricochet motion, it should help. So all of the places where you ever felt disempowered, may we bring your power back to that point and replenish you. Everywhere you have felt disempowered is an illusion. The power did not go anywhere. It's not hiding from you. There's nowhere for this energy to escape to. It has just been, it's just been kind of moved around so you can Bring it right back, just like a boomerang, just like those cords, but in a good way. So if you've ever given your power away to a situation, you're like, I helped them so much and I got crapped on. No, you didn't get crapped on. Just know that, oh, I made an investment out of love and pureness out of my heart. And I know that I genuinely did something good for these people. They took it and they got catalyzed and they went over there. I'm feeling like, oh, that piece of me is gone. Absolutely not. That was just an investment that you made because you're a self-replenishing being because you're alive and you're a source and we can do our chi workout. We can do our Egyptian posing, no problem. Energize in a day outside and be back at it again, helping someone else, but maybe picking the people you work with a little better, a little smarter, you know, not giving it all right away letting them earn earn your friendship a little bit with consistency and them actually reaching out to you instead of you constantly reaching out to them. For example, all of those investments that you made that you feel that maybe you got ripped off, we got to take that out of you now. We're going to take that out of you and freaking stomp on it. That does not serve you, does not serve you, and it is a lie. It is a full-blown lie. Like I said, the energy doesn't go anywhere. So like it'll come right back around like a boomerang and hit you right when you need it, right when you become magnetic to it, which is usually in a point of surrender, not in a point of action. So if there's some boomerangs that you're like, ah, oh, the universe owes me some, some back arounds for the investments that I've made in, in the other children of Gaia, you know, despite how that worked out. It was, I was being good. So good should return to me. But if you're like, where is my good? I'm waiting for it. And you're nervous and you're restless and you're, and you're masculine and you're moving around and you're like, oh, and you're stressed and you're calling people and you're texting and you're looking at your bank account and you're like, oh, oh my God, I can't pay my bills because over buddy over here stole my money or whatever. No, absolutely not. You have to get into the math, into the feminine mode. You have to take a bath. You have to literally relax to the point of boredom is the feminine receptive side which is why i even struggle with it because my brain is very active and so i have to force myself to take baths and every single time i do i always get the text message or the call of someone who genuinely cares about me some peer of mine that i'm working with offering me something to do offering me an opportunity filling me in about something that makes me feel way better whatever it is it just hits me but I need to stay in that state of femininity and receptivity where I'm not even expecting anything. You have to get to that point of relaxation where you're so zoned out. You forgot why you're even in the tub. You forgot why you've been relaxing and you're kind of getting bored again. You're like, oh, maybe I'll go check my phone. And there'll be the text message you're waiting for, for example. So this is sort of how we're going to be sending our power back out and having it come back to us in a healthier way. I will be giving you the theme for next month at the beginning of November. We're going to, I'm going to kind of work through this video and this theme still for the rest of October, because genuinely we have a lot of things that we need to keep our power from, because I think this is why we're doing this theme is that there's going to be major attempts to try and disempower you again, us more so 
you and I may be, aren't even that susceptible to the disempowerment, but there's going to be attempts to disempower people, 100%. There is constantly attempts because that's how they feed. They feed off of the fear that something is going out of character, out of plan from God's, you know, plan from the beautiful little utopia that most of us humans live in up here versus those chaotic, sick versions of ourselves that are getting a kick out of, you know, stimulating us at all and taking our power away just because they can. We're going to be getting to a point where, and we are, where we're going to be seeing all these attempts to take our power away to distract us and our momentum. And we're going to see them as what they are, as pathetic attempts from beings who are disempowered themselves. And so we're going to flip the narrative on them, which is proper, which is really what's happening from a place of power, seeing those who are disempowered and who only feel that they can, the way that they can stimulate their lives and their situation is by talking about fearful things and dividing people with choices. These are disempowered beings. You do not need to engage with them. The less you engage with them energetically, the better, because they will do whatever they can to keep your attention as long as possible. That's the entire goal, human attention. So do not give your attention away anymore starting today to anyone who clearly looks like a disempowered person, someone who thinks that the power is outside of them and that decisions are being made without their input at all. Those are disempowered people and they're designed to remind you of your power. You have the ability to vote mentally with your third eye every single time you hear about something happening on the earth immediately. And you can up your vote by doing cardio and getting your heart involved and getting that blood pumping, getting your aura pulsing with your breath. Breath is literally life, okay? The fact that you're breathing is spirit literally animating these bodies so the more spirit you have in your body the harder you know your blood is pumping the bigger your electromagnetic field will be and you will literally bend time and space around you because you will become more electromagnetically dense and you will bend space time and so your consciousness vote will become way more powerful than someone who barely who was like scrolling on twitter and was like that's stupid you're going to be outvoting them 10 to 1. And we can do it on this video also when you, and in our group chats and so on, like, I need help with this. My grid point over here needs a boost, for example. So that's what we'll end this video with is boosting you and your grid points with the group container intention just now and our electromagnetic field power so we can stay healthy, vital, and aware of what's going on. And we can meet back up and charge back up next month and see the progress even just this little bit of effort was for you because sometimes it's almost too much so i'm trying to take it easy to keep it on basic simple concepts because those are just those are plenty so yeah we're avoiding disempowering people and narratives because we are in our power and we see those who are in fear and we're in faith and we have our own power we know where God and source comes from. It's literally just energy. We know how to cultivate energy into our own bodies now. We've talked about it. And you know how to set your intentions with purity and with love instead of with fear. So, of course, I encourage you to continue doing that with the power and the tools that I've given you today for so on. And now we're going to envision each of us as lighthouses. When you think about where you live right now, because your aura is... It can be as big as your city. I want you to picture yourself as a crystal, as if you've turned yourself into like a diamond shaped crystal. You see where, as if you were, could stand in a diamond shaped kind of crystal shape, a nice like elongated sort of diamond. Imagine yourself as this diamond, okay? Like you're floating, you're not your body. This is the pureness of your of your soul. You look like a crystal. You're just floating here. Now we see lightning and sparks shining and exploding inside of this crystal. This crystal is lighting up and sparking inside of itself. It's alive, this crystal. It's alive. But not only is this crystal alive, it's, in, 
it's attached to intelligent infinity and can be a conduit of that infinity if necessary at any time. Sometimes great and incredible things will happen through us because we were at the right place at the right time for that intelligence to flow through and continue, <laughs> continue the game. Allow this and creative intelligence to flow into your heart, to know you as you are this crystal, you are this guardian of where you are living. And we radiate outward now to cover the entire above, below, east, west, north, south of your city perfectly in your aura. You're perfectly healed, safe, and desired, loving aura. You are watching over your city. You are energizing and uplifting it to the point of un touchable disempowered beings are going to bounce right off this field and no longer be able to live within it may your cities your grid points be cleared with the energy of this group and the intention of the one infinite creator to create and uplift humanity's love I feel it. I feel it so strong in my heart right now. This is really good. Just think about the name of your city. Again, if you want to write it down and circle it a few times, just to really, really get it in there, maybe draw the diamond. For example, to so get it, that was not very good. <laughs> to get an idea, just to visualize, I'll draw that better. Excuse me. <laughs> just to get a better visual but whenever you're starting to feel like mm, especially in the astral plane or when you wake up and there's a weird dream or people are being weird maybe your neighbors are yelling or there's someone outside your house making noise get into this crystal mode of yours again tap into all of us think about us think about my guardian training group i'm tapping into you right now as my support one infinite creator please energize my body my aura to protect this city and bring it into a higher elevated uplifted experience for all of us and feel the energy moving through your aura pushing out and fortifying the energy the best you can and know that we are with you this group container is now bringing energy through your body we're blasting through all those blockages and handing you the extremely clear instructions, the extremely clear notes, I want to say, from your body, from every chakra that we talked to today. All of those extremely clear shifts and changes that you know that you need to do to realign. May those be done. May your power be fortified, loved, and respected again not siphoned out to things that no longer serve you. We want to rein that all in. Throw out all your old stuff. Throw out all your garbage. Throw out all of your old subscriptions and throw out any sort of clothing or items that remind you of anyone that's ever sprayed their disempowered fear-based crap all over you. Because every time you see that object, you're going to get that energy. So just get them out. Everything decomposes eventually. It's fine. You can get rid of it and get it out of your field. It'll be worth it. So please, 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 whatever you do, anything, literally, this is your only homework for this one is pick something in your environment and in your aura and in your house that needs to go and please let it go. And you will receive in return the power that it was taking from you. Okay, promise. So that's your only homework. We did excellent lighthouses out there. I love you guys so much. I'm looking for the comments. I'm seeing some good feedback. Thank you, Spence. You felt it into your whole nervous system. Awesome. So while you guys are commenting, if anyone wants to go on camera or whatever too, go ahead. But I'm just going to sway a little more if you want to join me. And we're just going to, I'm getting energy stuff right here 
So I'm just going to work it out a little bit. A little bit of extra back there. <laughs> work it out, allow it. Sometimes you have to physically like, oops, physically like thumb and push the chi to your lymph systems, which are pretty much running the outside of your body. You can push the chi and push it down <laughs> and allow it to kind of ooh, run down your legs and allow that lymph to move. If your lymph isn't moving around, you definitely need to start drinking some more warm water <laughs> and eat less nut and seed oils. You know, only go for coconut oil if you can, pretty much. And ghee is another good one. We cook with coconut oil and ghee and we eat butter. And those are the only oils that we're trying to get into our system now because all the other oils, they're just getting really bad. They're very insidious to our systems. And a lot of us can't process it anymore and it's blocking our chi. These uh, rancid oils, a lot of them are rancid. Also wouldn't recommend if you guys are buying any kind of nut milks or any non-dairy milks, don't I would recommend you don't take those anymore because there's a lot of fillers and crap and stuff in there that's not even what you think it is make it at home or just switch to tea because you're not getting any real nutritional value from that milk anyways <laughs> so if you're a vegan and you're like oh it's not worth it trust me we've been around that block a hundred billion times just take it out of your diet I promise it'll help so much um what's the last thing that I want to say Yes, so we're going to be activating our superpower. So finally, I want to say with intention, you can follow my lead here, but say I give myself permission to unlock and remember more of who I am and what I am here on this earth and in this incarnation now to do. I give myself permission to know I release the fear, I release the control that I was taught to have over myself, over my body, over my senses. Please, you know, grand creator, one infinite creator, God source, please deliver to me what it is that I truly need to know now for my furthering growth and development. Just stand in reception until... You relax enough to get any ideas flow in your head, okay? Relax. This is the key to being a psychic is you have to completely surrender and relax so new information can flow in. Okay. So what is it that you saw? I literally saw a measuring cup, like a glass measuring cup. So that made me think of baking and cooking. So maybe for me and my soul's growth, that's what I have to engage with. It doesn't have to be crazy. My superpowers could be baking. I literally don't know, but you got to trust what you're seeing come in playfully, at least with me and guardian training and play with the things that come up, whatever it is, because play is actually a major part of activating your abilities because we playfully have our abilities. You've seen all these superhero movies. Does it not look like fun when they're also playing a little bit with their abilities, with their powers? They're having a little bit of extra, woo, a little bit of extra fun and play with their abilities. So whatever it is that feels like play to you and to trying or adding to your things next, Go with that because maybe your your first intention is to do something serious, you know, take yourself more serious, be more disciplined, right? That's often the direction <laughs> the spirituality can go is be more disciplined and serious about yourself. But what I'm learning more so is that play is actually a way where we can find our strengths again. And they tricked us as children to use play as a way to basically neglect children and be like distract yourselves with these toys that you didn't pick for yourselves for them a lot of the time also and play didn't become an explorative thing for the soul it became more of a thing to distract between attention for a lot of people too which was my case so I'm getting more into play more into toys more into fun even 
and it's activating me and it's making me more balanced, calm, happy, loving person because I'm getting the replenishment and the love and the play that my soul needs to feel happy here, to be present here. So not be constantly seeking for some sort of replenishment, but I've replenished myself by loving and playing with myself. So please go out there and do something for yourself. Do something playful with your powers and with your fun. And then we were going to come back next month and we're going to talk more specifically about your superpowers and about you as an individual. And if you don't want to share in the comments right now, if you want to work your way up to it, I get it. Also, if there's anyone here who wants to immediately connect with anyone in this group, please put your email or like your, your, whatever, you know, your tag so people can find you online and you guys can keep up with each other chat because you're clearly a similar soul. You're on the same path right now. Connect with each other. Use, and if you need me in the future, like use me, I'll help you connect and so on. But yeah, we really needed to just get really physical today, which was fun. You're very welcome. Things are going good. We did it. There's four of us left. Thank you all so much for this beautiful Tuesday night. I'm feeling good. I'm just going to bring my chi up, push it down, bring it up. You down, ground it into the ground again, grounding it with my heels, <laughs> shake it out on the shoulders. May you receive more information about your superpowers, about your play, and about your path of power tonight in your dreams and tomorrow through synchronicity. And may you please reach out to me and share with me these things. So we can continue the momentum. Thank you guys. Have a beautiful night. I am so grateful for you also. And yeah, this is going to be fun. I'm excited to keep going. The activations you're going to get from this are going to be a little bit, they're almost like timed release is what I'm hearing. And it's almost like we did a time release capsule in each of your chakras tonight. And so <laughs> when you sleep, maybe sleep without a pillow tonight so your spine can be nice and straight. So all of those little adjustments and alignments can continue kind of resetting themselves, kind of getting themselves sorted out. You would be surprised. You'd be surprised. Like I'm actually trying to take it easy on you in this one because of the effect that I was told that this class is going to have on us. So... <laughs> We're going to work our way up, is what I'm hearing, in the best kind of ways. And I, me personally, I'm excited to see what's going to be next. I'm hearing dreams is next. So the next theme is going to be dreams. So we're going to start working more on our lucid world for the next one, okay? So I want, intentionally, we're going to work on our lucid life, our lucid dreaming. And I will have a bunch of options and opportunities for you by the next 18th to dive into that more, off, open up to that more potentially. And we're going to we're gonna go over the progress that you've had since from now in your past. Goodbye to your past. You're a whole new person. We just reset all your chakras, your whole aura, your guardianness. Go out there and see what's going to look different for you. I'm super excited to see how it goes. Thanks for joining me in, in the Dojo Guardians. I'm a happy host. And I'll see you out there, okay? I'll message you with the recording of this and the Patreon tier. So good night, everyone. I love you. And continue spreading the love and enjoy your power. I certainly have. So it's been a pleasure. Good night, y'all. <laughs>